to our annual festive display of our students' experience with our resident artists. And um, it's going to be a joy to see. With their experience in dance and drama with resident artists, art, artists every year for every student culminates in a rich experience of the arts by the time they're in eighth grade. So if Mr. Tom and Mr. Bill could come over here for me uh, uh, a minute, we are privileged to have the same artists, I think for about 10 years. <laughs> our school once again, uh, believe me, they are in demand all over the place, um, but they give priority in their schedule to our school. So, Mr. Everett, uh, or Tom Everett, let's call him Mr. Tom has enjoyed a world-class career as a dancer in the New York City, uh, with, in New York City with the Paul Taylor Dance Company, with whom he did national and world tours, New York seasons, and television shows. He is also the director of his own company, Dance Ever, for which he has created an award-winning body of choreographic work and performed throughout the region and nationally. He has emerged as a leader in the field of education in schools. In 2020, he received the distinction of a nationally credentialed master teaching artist from Young Audiences of New York. He says that his time at virtual school is the highlight of his teaching schedule. <laughs> Bill Morgan, Mr. Bill, is the owner of Sign Stage Theater. Besides presenting theater by and about the deaf community, Sign Stage uses theater techniques to improve the social, language, and literary skills of all ages in many area schools. He helped create a new standardized patient program for people with disabilities at Northeast Ohio Medical University, where he also lectures medical students about working with the deaf community. He is an actor, director, and leader in arts education in Northeast Ohio. His most recent honor was an award from the city of Cleveland for his creativity in promoting awareness of deaf culture. He says that he loves working with the students at our school. Hi, I am presenting dances for grades one, three, five, and seven, and Mr. Bill acting plays for grades two, four, six, and eight. We're going to begin with grades one and three on stage, a demonstration of the uh, learning they've had about the art form, <coughs> the fundamentals of body, emotion, feeling, and uh, shape, time, space. Here we are, the first and third graders in their exercise. This is a short four minute series of um, fundamentals. So if you go on there, your places, boys and girls, grades one and three. Third graders on stage, also the exercises. No, I mean not performing space. Take. 
Third grade is doing geometry, so we're seated in a triangular system. Isn't that something? <laughs> That's my favorite part. <laughs>
way back when we first started. And it was funny because I just found the original paper. I remember sitting down with Lena and meeting. I don't know where she went. Um, but I sat down with her and I had uh, And I had that yellow paper that I made notes on. That first meeting, I remember sitting at that round table in a room up there. Uh, but I just found that the other day. Uh, so I've been coming here quite a while. And it's because of the students. And what I do here is I experience the product of good parenting, which is so difficult sometimes in some of the public schools that we go into. It can be, it can be very difficult. But uh, the parents here, I'm certain, are doing a wonderful job. The teachers are doing an amazing job. Give them a round of applause. second, fourth, sixth, and eighth. Uh, the second graders, we do a little skit. Now, for this skit, it's more important that the students know when they enter, what, what their cues are, when, when they say what they're supposed to say. It's not as scripted. It's a little bit more improvisation. So they learn about um, cues and, and backing up each other and, and uh, following along with the storyline. And therefore, the majority of the work for them is teamwork. How do they work together with each other? And so that is kind of the foundation of the first skit that is entitled The Giant Turnip. <laughs>
the shed, brought it out, put it in the middle of the barnyard because everybody was hungry. Everybody wanted to have some of Grandma's famous award-winning turnip soup. All the animals and all the people that lived and worked on the farm gathered around the big cooking kettle. Grandpa got the fire going, and everyone was happy. Well, everyone except the turnip. <laughs>
uh, for the fourth graders in which they have to not only learn all the blocks and all the cues and everything that goes with it, but they also have to memorize some um, rhymes. It's not too many. Um, and so this one is entitled The Golden Goose. Once upon a time, a poor woodcutter lived in the forest. He had three children that helped him. The oldest child was a strong son. The middle child was a beautiful daughter. And the youngest was, well, the youngest wasn't very smart, but he loved life and everyone loved him. He didn't even have a name, so the family just called him Simpleton because, well, he was simple. Hi, I'm happy! <laughs> One beautiful sunny morning, the father went to the first child, the strong son, and, and said, I need you to go to the woods and chop some wood because I'm old and tired. Before the son left, the father gave him a bottle of sweet apple cider. <laughs> and a basket with sugar cake for lunch. So the brother picked up the food and the axe and he went off into the forest. Deep in the forest, he met two strange little elves who looked hardly as a basket and asked, Will you share your food with us? No, I am a big strong man and I need to eat all of this food by myself. But as the strong son began to chop wood, little elves put a magic spell on his axe, and pretty soon his axe swirled and whirled wildly in the air. Before long, he chopped himself to the point. <laughs> he had to live home to his father without any wood. What happened to you? Two little elves put a spell on my axe, and I chopped myself in the foot. I don't believe you. Go to your room. <laughs> The next day, father went to the middle child, the beautiful daughter, and asked her the same thing. I need you to go to the woods and chop some wood because I'm old and tired and your useless brother chopped himself in the mud. <laughs> So simple. 
looked at that the three little elves, and he did walk down to that river that they talked about. There he found that big oak tree near the big rock, and he chopped it down. One, two, three, four, five. Looking amongst the roots, he found a goose. Why, it was a goose with feathers made of pure gold. Whoa! Delighted, Simpleton scooped up the goose and the feathers, and he headed home. <coughs> but since it was a long ways from home, that time Simpleton decided to stay there by him, and he paid for his room with one of the golden feathers. Whoa, a golden feather? Look at that. I was well, Simpleton had a wife and three children, and it wasn't every day that someone paid for the room with a feather made of pure gold. So poking their heads out from around the corner, as Simpleton went to sleep, the innkeeper's three daughters thought of a plan to steal the golden goose. I'm gonna go first. No, please. No, I'm gonna go first. You're gonna go first. You're gonna go first. I'm gonna go first. I'm gonna go first. Let me go first. When Simpleton was sound asleep, the innkeeper's oldest child tiptoed into the room. Quietly, the oldest child reached out to grab the golden goose. But the moment her hand touched the goose, it stuck fast. Try as she might, she could not remove her hand. She just thought, Oh well, I guess there's nothing I can do now. Maybe if I go to sleep, I'll be fine in the morning. Later that night, the innkeeper's middle child opened the door to Simpleton's room. The middle child tiptoed into the room with the intention of stealing the golden goose. But much to her surprise, she found her big sister asleep and snoring. She decided to wake her big sister, but the moment she tapped her on the shoulder, she too was stuck, and she too thought. Before long, the innkeeper's youngest child tiptoed into Simpleton's room. She saw both the four sisters asleep and snoring. She walked over, tapped the arm of the middle sister, but at that moment, her fingers were instantly stuck. She too thought the same thing. Oh well, there's nothing I can do now. I'll just go to sleep, and in the morning, everything will be fine. And the next morning, when they all awakened, Simpleton yawned and said, oh, Now that was a good night's sleep. He picked up the golden goose, tucked it under his arm, and without even noticing the three sisters who were stuck behind him, Simpleton left the inn. Well, the innkeeper and his wife saw their three children stuck behind Simpleton, and they called out to them. Hey, where are you going with your life? No, 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 But when the innkeeper and his wife grabbed the shoulder of the youngest child, they too were stuck. Their hands were stuck fast. Now, Simpleton was making his happy way down the road. There were two farmers that were out working in the field. They saw this strange sight, and they cried out for help. Help! Help! Oh, a golden goose. I'll go get some. Well, as soon as the farmer showed up, yeah, he too got stuck and had to stagger along behind everyone else.
where he saw two guards standing outside the front gate. He asked the first guard, What's going on here? All the rich men in the kingdom are trying to make the princess laugh. She hasn't laughed in years. The first worthy man to make the princess laugh will get to marry her. So they could hear the voice of the princess coming from the balcony of the castle. Oh, mother, if there's anything that's not funny, it's a bunch of spoiled rich men trying to get something for nothing. But the queen begged her daughter. disgust and turned away from her mother. And when she did, she saw circles and all the people tripping along behind them. Wow. It was strange, it was weird, but it was in fact hilarious. <laughs> the first time it was, the princess laughed out loud, and she laughed and laughed and laughed. The queen, however, was not too pleased. The queen frowned and said, I said a rich man. From a rich family, not some poor woodcutter. Someone just shrugged his shoulders and said to the queen, Whether I marry the princess or not, with just one golden feather, we can all eat like kings and queens. Come one, come all. And Simpleton offered the queen one of the golden feathers. Well, at the very moment that the queen touched the golden feather, all the people said they were free and spread out and collapsed into a heap of their arms and legs and flying paths. Let's go the princess roared.
of it. But folks, we did second graders and fourth graders. Uh, we do the same thing every year. And actually, some of the younger students, like the kindergartners, will look at or the first graders, will look at the second graders, do it. And they start thinking of themselves, like, oh, maybe I want to play that part. Because they actually do that. They, they come in on the first day when I work with them. I want to be the princess. I want to be this. I want to be you know, And so they, they anticipate it's going to happen. And that's a good thing. Now, we're going to get to the sixth grade now. Now we're going to get into more just regular straight performing. Here's a script. You have to learn it, learn your lines, do blocking, do props, some sound effects, and now we're more like a regular production. Now, for the sixth grade, because um, it's difficult to find one thing that has enough parts for 20 some people in the class, uh, I've got several. I've got a half a dozen, but they're pretty short. You know, they're, one might only be 30 seconds. The next one might only be one minute. So we've got about six or eight of uh, little skits for the sixth grade. Same thing will happen with the eighth graders. And just one more uh, safety thing. We do use a chainsaw prop, but the chain has been removed. So it's <laughs> All right. Um, the first one is called, for the sixth graders, Finding a Dead Body. Here, this is our top of the line chainsaw. 
You'll be able to cut twice as much wood as you did before. Oh, okay. The next day. <laughs> Next, first grader and their boots. Oh, I have a fever. 
fever and the chills and an achy everywhere. Let me go get a thermometer. No, no, I mean, no. I'm sure my temperature is way too high for a normal thermometer. Well, then let me go get some. No, no, not to medicine. But the medicine will help me feel better. But the pain, it kind of moves everywhere. Really? Where does it hurt the most? In my, um, my, uh, fingernails. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. 
one for the sixth graders. Um, and this, is, you know, I gotta tell you, about it. I just learned their ad living. It was perfect. It was perfect. Ad lib. Yeah, I know you don't know that, but, but they did it so well. It's great. Um, this one is entitled Blue River.
ready for the eighth graders. And again, um, a, a series of uh, short little skits. I think there's uh, five all together. And they're relatively short. And uh, stick around for the last one. There's a real special thing that happens at the end of the last one. Uh, some of you know what it is. <laughs> And the first hit is entitled The Librarian. Please turn your voices off. This is the library. Excuse me? Why do we have to turn our voices off? Because this is a quiet space. But why? Because a library is a place for people to read and focus. And that's hard to do when there's a lot of noise and distraction. Oh, I get it. <laughs> now, children, today we're going to be reading a story about a magical... Excuse me, if this is a quiet space, then why are you talking? <laughs> I'm a librarian, and I'm trying to share a story. Oh, got it. <laughs> now, this story is about a magical land where mythical creatures rule the earth. <laughs> no, it's a story. <laughs> Where mythical creatures rule the earth and time stood still. Now that's just ridiculous. Time stood still, that could never happen. <laughs> In this land, a fierce dragon was tormenting the people. He crushed their crops. He destroyed their dreams. Excuse me, how do we know if the dragon is a he or a she? What's the dragon's name? Then again, names can be deceiving. And dragons aren't real, so... This is a story! A story I'm trying to tell you and your classmates! It's make-believe! It's fiction! <laughs> <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. 
Yes, it is entitled, The Ticket Booth is Not Open Yet. Gosh, I hope they don't sell that ticket before I can get mine. They can't sell out. They haven't even opened the ticket booth yet. Yeah, what's taking them so long? It was supposed to open at 4 and it's already 4.30.
reasons why I enjoy coming into the school is simply because of the efforts of all of the school teachers. They're amazingly supportive, amazingly supportive. Uh, the way they, they step up and they help their students and they help me and they help everybody. They help the school. It's a really, really, really good school. And just imagine Helene and Chuck started this how many years ago? It's amazing what somebody's vision can create. We're all here because of them. Thank you, Helene and Chuck. And our very last skit is entitled The Bandana. You know, Scout, a bandana is a very huge thing to have. Take out your bandanas and I'll show you how useful they can be. You're late! I know, I know. I just went swimming. You know a good scout is always prepared and on time, right? I know, I know, but I have water meters, but I have everything I need in my handy, handy, trusty backpack. Okay, well today's lesson is about, is about how to use a bandana. Huh? So if you got a bandana, banana in there, get it out. Ah <laughs> uh, yes, where was I? So, a bandana is very useful to wipe the sweat off your face. Give it a try. <laughs>